So we like to say that our new life begins with a new thought. And there's a lot of historical repetition of that. It's been along, around for a long time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word was a new thought. That new thought, that new intention, that new idea to bring something new into experience. So when we talk about new thought, people say, oh, well, you just think that you're new. Well, no, this is not new. This is not new at all. New thought is ancient wisdom. New thought has been around for an awfully long time. It's the idea to change our experience by changing our thinking, by changing our word, and putting a new word into the law. And oh yeah, by the way, that was the part that they left out in the scripture is after the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, then what happened? God said, let light. Well, that was a different part of it. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and all the rest of that. It's another way of explaining the same thing. There is a creative law in the universe that responds to intention set upon it. And those laws, those are natural laws. That creative process, the law of attraction, the law of creation, is the same stuff that's going on all the time. There's a law of gravity. It's a principle. It just works all the time. There's, you know, the principles of electricity and thermodynamics and all the rest of the stuff that happens in nature all the time. Those are laws. And they're predictable and they're dependable. And they work. And they always work. And they work regardless of who we are. And they work regardless of whether or not we believe they work. Raise your hand if you don't believe in gravity. If you were to not believe in gravity, would you be immune to its effects? No. No, in fact, you wouldn't. There would still be gravity. You would still be subject to gravity. Now, there could be ways around it. There could be exceptions and asterisks and loopholes as our knowledge and our understanding of natural laws grows, which we call science, by the way, as our understanding of how it works evolves and expands, we are able to accomplish things that we didn't used to be able to do. For example, early man used to stand upon the ground and look to the sky and see the birds and say, I wish I could fly. And I can now go on Expedia and buy myself a ticket and I can fly. And everybody says, oh, well, that's because you have an airplane. But yeah, the guy who was there before didn't have an airplane. It was that desire and that intention to be able to fly that led us to understand how the aerodynamics worked and the invention of the engine that could push the plane fast enough to get the lift. With all of those pieces in place, we now have the TSA. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> But we can fly. You know, I used to tell, tell the same story, you know, the, 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 the people in the cave looking up at the moon. We've been there. I haven't. I don't really want to go. It seems kind of dangerous. It's really far away. You know, I've had a flat tire in my car and it's been inconvenient. I don't want to get one of those on my lunar rover. <laughs> but that's not to say it can't happen. All of these things are possible. I watched the, uh, the Martian movie. Now, we haven't been to Mars to that level, but everything in that movie was completely believable about how we would go about getting to Mars and what that experience and process would be like. It was an orderly progression of the next unfolding and step. So when we say your new life begins with a new thought, the thought doesn't have to be based on the stuff that happened before. It can be that yearning for the moon. It can be that desire to fly. It can be for whatever. So we do on the fifth Sunday of the month is we have a healing celebration. And healing is not where we're fixing the problems and the stuff that's busted in our lives. It's not where we correct the physical maladies or undo the issues that we're having with our finances. Although it's curious that we do it on the last Sunday of the month, which is right before the first of the month. <laughs> I once had somebody kind of jokingly tell me that uh, wealthy is when you don't realize it's the first of the month. <laughs> it's not to fix something that's broken. It's not to correct a problem or something bad. Healing is simply the revealing of the truth. In the beginning there was nothing but God. 
and that infinite potential and that ability to speak the word and create something new. The healing is getting back to that truth, to understand and remind ourselves that we are that same infinite power and presence. We have accessible to us all of that good. Not just all the good that's nearby, not just a repeat of the good that's been in our lives before, but all the good. It is limited only by our beliefs. Why is it limited by our beliefs? Because we really need to be ready to accept it in order to have it. It's like wanting a drink of water and having somebody open up a fire hydrant on you. It's really hard to get a drink of water when, the, when it's coming at you that fast. And for somebody to casually say, I want all the water in the world, it's like suddenly Niagara Falls. Well, now, now I'm no longer thinking about being thirsty. Now I'm concerned about falling and drowning. <laughs> So it's about being ready to accept the experience or the gift or the abundance that's always available to us. It's about being the channel that good can flow through into our lives. And it works in all areas of our lives. Whatever it is that we're open to, wherever that yearning is, it can be for physical health. There are miraculous transformations that can happen to us in physical health. And it's not the Christian science, you can't go to the doctor, you can't take the pill, you can't do anything else, you just have to pray. Because it's all God. So God is in that intention. God is in that miraculous, spontaneous healing. God is in the surgeon. God is in the medical device. God is in the pill. God is in the process. It's all good. There's always a possibility for that good to unfold. And we don't have to control what the channel's gonna be. Same thing with our, with our, our financial situation. We can claim our prosperity, know that we live in an infinitely abundant universe, and open ourselves up to that good showing up in our lives. Now, it may show up by the boss giving you a raise. It may show up by somebody, you know, a new contract, a new very valuable something to do. And it may show up through a way that you didn't expect at all. When you go out and buy a lotto ticket, and you say, my good is going to come to me through this lottery ticket, you are so limiting the universe and the possibilities and the potentials. Yeah, the good might come to you through the lottery ticket, but not necessarily this month or year or perhaps lifetime. What we're looking for is that experience. What is the experience that I want to have? And oh, by the way, why do we want to have a new experience? Anybody? Because we're really not happy with the current experience? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that. For a new result. Yes, to get a, to get a new result. You know, it stinketh. <laughs> what? It stinketh. 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 Yes, it stinketh, and I wish to change it. <laughs> and by putting the eth or the thou or the thy on it, it makes it 10% more spiritual because it's a Sunday morning talk. We can change anything. We can change that prosperity experience. We can change our, our relationships, our family and our love experiences because we live in a universe of infinite love. That love is always available even if it shows up at somebody who's yelling at you all the time. It's completely possible that's not the right relationship for you. Hmm. It's completely possible that there's something else going on with that person who feels that you need to be yelled at that needs a little bit of a shift. So having the opening for them to be different in the relationship, not to need them to be different in the relationship, but if I go in with the expectation that that person who's always yelled at me is going to continue yelling at me, then I'm going to get yelled at through the entire relationship. And as soon as I'm willing to say that I deserve better, that this person I'm in a relationship with is looking for something different as well, and I open up that possibility, then everything can change. Newfound respect, something shifts in, in, in the world around us, and oh my goodness, now there's this huge level of understanding about what's going on. You know, some challenge or adversity that comes in from the outside, oh, well now suddenly we're on the same team. And as soon as we find that out, we can stay on the same team forever or they fall in love with somebody else and disappear. <laughs> and then there's the opportunity to do something different. Our creativity and our work, what we're doing today, it's, people think of our jobs as so fundamental and core. You know, if somebody asks, you know, 
tell me about yourself. And we tell them, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a doctor, or I'm a consultant, or I'm a banker, or I'm a musician, or I'm a whatever it is. That's not who you are. That's the job that you do. Who you are is somebody who has those gifts and abilities to look at the wiring and say, this could be better. To look at the signs and say, there's a better way of getting people to move through this area. To look at a patient who's uh, got uh, an injury or an illness and say, I can be of service and help them to return to the vitality and the health and the function that's theirs. It's not about what you're doing that defines you. It's about how you're sharing your gifts <coughs> and abilities so that you can bring yourself to that. And along the way, you do something. And that's your creativity. That's your work. That's your work in the world. And sometimes it looks like a mundane day job. And sometimes it's the sort of thing that other people might dismiss. But as long as you're bringing yourself to it, as long as you're bringing your heart and your passion to it, that's your gift. And it might be connected to your finances, or it might not. There might be something that you're passionate about that's such a gift for you that it's worth having a day job and doing something else for the money so that you're free to do that. And there's also the possibility of just being able to share your gifts directly and be supported that way. John Francis, professional musician. <sighs> Not always easy. There's a huge consciousness about musicians that you gotta struggle. Starving artist. So, and some of them starve and some of them don't. But the idea is share the gifts. Be the channel that that inspiration or that creativity is coming through and let the universe support that. And if they're not doing it here today, by golly, they're gonna do it last month in Switzerland. <laughs> So healing is not correcting the problem. Healing is the revealing of the truth, the truth that we already have access to all of our good, that is open to us right now and always. And it works in any area of our lives. So we're gonna do um, a ceremony with uh, the, the candle lighting that Reverend Dave is gonna lead us in in a couple of minutes. But if there's something specific that you'd like to bring up in your life, that you'd like to have something change about, you can make it up in your mind if you want to, or if you'd like to share it with the group here. This is a safe space. We're not going to repeat, you know, tell your story to anybody else. We'll help you come up with that affirmation, to come up with that pivot. Because when somebody's experiencing poverty, they can't say, I don't want to have poverty anymore. Because what the universe hears is I and poverty. <laughs> so we've been going through this Beyond Limits class. We also had the Practical Prayer Workshop yesterday, so there might be some stuff that's percolating uh, from that or from another purpose. Anybody want to share, bring something up? Do you want to create in your life? Share or bring something up? What, what is it you want to create next, Brad? Um, so I've been Meditating, opening up, allowing, creating a vivid, palpable emotional experience of the various end results that I am looking to create. And so I kind of go back and forth between, between to get clarity, I feel the emotion, and then I feel the emotion, and then I get a little clarity, and then I get some mental clarity, and then I enhance the emotion. So I have a threefold path that's been. Uh, marinating and, and, and simmering and uh, through the middle of the like last night she did some work and I just did a street about a uh, whole night long visioning, manifesting, meditating session and I took a piece of canvas and a big eraser and a pencil and divided it into three spaces and on the far left are websites and the middle is my electrical business and on the right is the uh, is a um, uh, real estate. And so I sat there and I um, meditated and felt around and got a sense for the speed at which this sort of meditative flow was happening and I drew like my garages and then I look at the garages and then I get a feeling of what it would feel like to walk in and know where every single thing is. And I just beam that out and then I hold it in my forehead or third eye or however you want to do it and I project like through it into the universe. And so 
those are the three things. Well, part of the some some clarity that I've you know carved out about three things I want to create and, and how I'm doing it. Okay. Okay. And I also really resonated with what you said with what you're saying. It's like uh, you know awakening seems like you disidentify from a lot of traditional aspects of life because you have to like push it away to anchor in yourself or consciousness of the present moment or your new beliefs and then to me I, I perceive it as like a slow reabsorption of the best part of what's traditional conscious role playing and um, so what you said about like God moves through uh, both the clinical Western medicine and the Reiki. You know, it's just it's so it's it just resonates with me so much because what I what I you know being caught in a in a, just another belief structure about oh if it's not if it's not all natural it can't help me you know it's just another <laughs> limiting belief that the previous beliefs were limiting as well but it's you know, the hybrid. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and the, the insight that you bring up is when you're in a place like that where you know that there are these three things that could be happening for you, and it sounds to me like you, 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 you've, you've got the ability to manifest and to, to move on all of them. That's how I got what I have now. Yeah. So I'm very, you know, yeah. in the... So, so, so part of it is clarity, and mostly it's guidance. Guidance in which part I'm going to bring myself to next. Um, and then it might be one of those three, or it might be a fourth, or it might be that you do four and nothing like that. Fifth, no, then it's going to be number eight. It's communication a lot of it because you know you think you need to know what you want, and any relatively seasoned manifesto will know you don't have to know exactly what you want. You have to be able to create the emotions and beam out the feeling that you would have if you had it. But then that communicating with your mind and creating clarity and then opening up, you know, it's like a triangle. Yep. Anybody remember what we said in the, the, the workshop yesterday? The first, the, the first um, catch-all? When we're doing a prayer, we're not sure exactly what we want. This or something better. This or something better. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. If you put that into your intention, this or something better, then you're not limiting it because yeah, it might be exactly where you think it's coming from, or it might be from someplace completely new. Thank you, Brian.